makers today's tutorial is going to be the mini ncw by emmeline bags i'm going to be making it on the Genomi hd9 i'm going to be using vinyl and waterproof canvas i'm going to be constructing using standard moon polyester thread and using a 16 a 116 needle i have interfaced my vinyl with a lightweight woven interfacing the reason being is I've actually found that the vinyl that I've chosen has a slight stretch to it and it is actually quite thin so just to try and eliminate any distortion while I'm constructing the bag and just to try and give it an extra bit of structure once it's constructed I decided to use a, a woven interfacing um, on it all I did to do that was I just um, used a Teflon sheet just the standard type sheet that you can get out of asda like a an oven teflon sheet um put the vinyl on the ironing board or i actually use like a heat press but you could just put it on the ironing board face like right side down then the woven interface and over the top put the teflon sheet over the top and then press um, and that will adhere the woven interface and to the back of the vinyl and it won't distort the um, right side of the vinyl and then just allow it to cool completely lying flat and then it won't distort the shape um, of your vinyl piece and I have found that that has given extra stru structure to the vinyl piece and it has reduced the, the stretch to it. So I'll talk you through the pieces used to um, construct the wallet. Obviously all your pieces are in the pattern whether you decide to go for the standard or the mini the construction for both the standard and the mini are very very similar the, the real change is, is, is only the, the size so your dimensions and then in the mini you can choose between whether you want to do vertical um, card slots or horizontal card slots so obviously your measurements for where you would do your folds changes between the two I'm going to be doing the vertical ones so obviously the measurements are slightly different but the way that you would you would fold is is the same it would just be the measurements would be slightly different so you would still do the process the same way but you would just follow the measurements within the pattern so if you wanted to do the standard you could still follow along with this tutorial but you would just follow the dimensions and the measurements within the pattern that that's laid out Obviously the pattern instructions are really thorough. Um, I did my first ones without following any video tutorials um, and I did manage just fine. Um, so it is a very, very well, well written pattern. So I actually do my card slots in one piece and then cut down so I have my card slot piece and I'll show you how I mark them and then fold them and then I have my card slot piece back both of them in waterproof canvas, no interfacing. I then am doing a double zipper pocket. Um, so I have two zipper pocket pieces and four zipper pocket lining pieces. So my zipper pocket pieces, my lining pieces are in waterproof canvas and my outer pieces are in my vinyl and they have been interfaced with a lightweight woven interfacing. I then have my two flat pieces, so my outer and my lining. Now my lining has been interfaced or structured, stabilised with Deckerville Light. Now you'll be able to see that that has been done out of the seam allowances. Um, that again is just to give the flap extra structure and I have interfaced with woven interface on this vinyl because you should be able to see that it's even with the interfacing this vinyl is still quite thin and it's not a it's not a thick heavy vinyl so those are the two flap pieces and then I have the two body pieces so I have my lining body piece again waterproof canvas no interfacing and then my outer body piece which has been 
interfaced with woven interfacing and then there is this middle piece which is Decaville light which has been kept out of the seam allowance there is a pattern piece for this within the pattern and these markings I will talk you through because these are the placements for my snap and my nameplate um, but I'll talk you through them once we get to those in the construction and then the other bits that we will need is two zippers cut to the specified size four zipper ends I have my nameplate obviously this is optional you don't have to have this you can use a, you know a little handmade tag um, if you want to you don't have to put it on at all it is completely optional and then um, you have your magnetic snap I'm using an 18 mil magnetic snap you can especially on the mini you can use a 14 mil magnetic magnetic snap I personally prefer an 18 mil because I just find that it it gives um, extra strength when you're closing it particularly if you're somebody like me who has lots of you know loyalty cards different cards put in there receipts you know different bits of paper um, shoved in their purse um, you know it's quite bulging and that 18 mil magnetic snap I find just gives that extra bit um, structure and strength um, but a 14 mil magnetic snap will work perfectly fine if that's what if that's what you've got so those are the things that you'll need to construct your wallet so I'm going to move the camera around now and we'll start um, sewing the wallet up so give me two minutes okay I always like to start with my card slots first so I always go card slots zipper pockets then I construct my flap then my outer body and then construct it all together and that's just the way that I've always worked it I think the pattern goes in a slightly different order but that's the way that I've always constructed mine so that's the way that I'll take you through it so you need to mark your lines your, your markings as instructed um, from the pattern so I actually mark little tiny snips I don't know if you can see that on the camera on my waterproof canvas and this is the easiest way that I find to, to do my card slots with waterproof canvas so then I'm, I mark my snips on each side and then I just run my stiletto tool which is just this along that line just once just to sort of help make a crease I don't obviously want to cut the fabric or, or sort of um, affect the integrity of the fabric in any way I just want to kind of help fold it and create a crease in it so those markings what I what I do is I go to my first two snips I line them up and where I've marked along with that stiletto it kind of just wants to naturally fold so I just finger press it because obviously with waterproof canvas you can't really press especially with the outside so I just finger press it along a few times I then come down and that is right sides together your first your first fold is right sides together and then I come down to my next fold and I find my two little snips and I line them up and then where I've marked it like I say it just tends to naturally want to fold 
and then I'll just check that it's folding along where I've marked which it is and then I top stitch it along at this point so I top stitch it sort of as I go so I'm going to top stitch this at an eighth of an inch and I always top stitch at 4.5 that's just my preferred stitch length and I'm going to top stitch all the way along and then your next fold is right sides together and I find my two little snips in the C you can see where I've where I've marked that with my stiletto it is just naturally folding finger press that along and then I mark my next fold and this is again wrong sides together and I'm going to top stitch this one I'll line up the edges on one side and baste them and then do the same on the other side that they're lining up nice and neatly now you'll see that I've got a much bigger piece than what I need one of the reasons is is I cut my piece a lot longer than what I need it to be um, because basically it means if I have sort of cut um, if I've cut my snip slightly off and I need to readjust it I can I've got a little bit to play around with and I don't end up with a piece that's too short and I can easily cut it down so that's what I do at this point so I literally get my cutting mat The measurements are given to you in the pattern of what the finished piece needs to be for your card slots. I always hang on to these little pieces because I quite often use them for zipper ends. They're quite, they're quite handy. So, and then this because i cut mine as double the width because i make it in one piece what i'm going to do is mark my center and i'm just going to sew up that side of the line and then down the other side of the line so that i can cut it in in half
and then these get sawn together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Construction, I always change my stitch to two and a half. our card slot piece constructed and what we need to do is we need to put this in half in order to create our separate card slots so again your measurements are all given in the pattern piece when I'm top stitching because I always use a top stitch length when I do this part is I always just back stitch over those folds because it just gives extra strength so you're putting your cards in and out these stitches don't come away so easily so it gives like better longevity to your to your wallet That's the front of your card slot done and I just push my seams down to one side then just with right sides together I put the front of my card slots to my card slot back and I just sew the top and the bottom together a quarter of an inch seam allowance Give her a little bit of TLC. Right. So once your top and bottom seams are sewn, turn through so your right sides are facing out. And again, because waterproof canvas can't really be um, ironed. I mean, you, you, can, you can sew on the um, you, sorry, you can iron on the right side, but I find that you, you know if you just finger press, that's more than enough. So I'm just gonna finger press those seams so that they're sitting right in the middle, and then I'm just gonna top stitch around. And I just make sure that my, my seam is facing the same way as when I sewed the top stitching separating the card slots out. Again, just making sure that that seam is going to be facing the same way 
as it is the other times. And that's our card slots done. So we can put them to one side. So move on to our zipper pockets. So I've already done one zipper with the ends. So I'll show you how I do them. Because I'm using vinyl, I've cut my zipper ends by one and a quarter by one inches because I'm using number five zipper tape. And because I'm using vinyl, obviously it won't fray, so I don't need to fold it in on itself. I'm just burning the ends, ends of those zippers just so that they don't fray. And I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided tape down the centre of these ends so that it holds it in place. Just take the back off, place it in the centre and just fold over on itself. Now I place my double sided tape in the centre so that it keeps it out of where I'm going to be sewing but obviously helps to keep the zip in place while I'm sewing so it doesn't, doesn't move. So I top stitch that in place. And then just do the same on the other side. So just line it up so it's nice and square. measurements that you need for the size zippers that you're going to need are again in your pattern pieces so obviously your shorter sides are going to be the sides that hold your zippers so I start with obviously this is non-directional so but because obviously I do have a, a, like a little bit of a pattern, I want to make sure that I have my pattern going in roughly the same way so it doesn't look, you know, too, too different. So I'm going to decide on, yeah, I think I'm going to have it going this way. So I'm basically going to mark my centres on both of the shorter sides. And I'm going to mark the centres of my zips as well. So I want my zips to be facing from left to right and I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided tape to hold them in place. Now your zip measurements are roughly an inch shorter so you're going to have half an inch 
on either side so that you can sew down and create your zip pockets. So I put my double sided tape roughly half an inch in from each edge to attach my zip on. So I find my centre mark. I haven't snipped that very well or there and then align that and the mark on my zip so basically means that my zip is nice and even on both sides and then you want zip lining right sides together and you want to attach them at a quarter of an inch I deviate ever so slightly from the pattern in how I construct the um, zipper pockets together. I'm just making sure that they're still all lined up. I think the, the method that I use, um, I think I originally saw on... Lauren's channel so I think it's the the method that Lauren uses to do her zipper pockets um, I just find it a lot easier so I then top stitch this one some people do you know putting the zips in and then go back and top stitch and our top stitches I go because I find it easier and then I'm just going to put my zip in on the other side so Obviously you want to make sure that you put your zips in the right way. So obviously that zip is that way there. So I want to make sure that my zip is in exactly the same way. So I find my centres, match them up. match my line and pieces right sides together and then I just move my zipper out of the way When I, when I get to that bit where my zipper is, I just lift my foot and move it out of the way. And then I'm just doing exactly the same as I did before. I'm just top stitching, making sure I line up my edges so that it's nice and neat. then to create the other side I'm actually going to cut 
this um, in half. So I obviously want to make sure that I create this, this, the halves of this in the same direction as this half. So I'm going to mark just top there and top there. And then cut this piece in two. And then find my centers at the top. And then I'm just going to apply my zipper tape and put my zips and my lining in exactly the same way as I did on the first piece. And I'm also just sort of making sure that all of my edges sort of line up and are pretty similar, and fairly square. When I move my zipper out of the way, I always just double check that I haven't, you know, dislodged the zipper tape from the double sided tape and it's all still aligned.
got all the zipper pieces sewn together. We open our zips roughly halfway. And then matching the edges. just going to sew down at a quarter of an inch Exactly the same on the other side. I'll just trim this down on either side to about an eighth of an inch and obviously you just want to check on either side that you've definitely caught in you know each side of the line and and then obviously when you turn it through you just want to make sure that you've caught each side of your vinyl what I actually find that you, what makes this slightly easier to turn through is to take it to your pressing table use pressing cloth or a Teflon sheet over the top and just use use your iron warm it up slightly and it'll turn through ever so like easier so I'm going to go and do that and turn it through and then I'll come back and we'll top stitch it and that that this that will be this part finished so I've just warmed this up with the iron and you can see it just makes this a lot easier to turn through it works as well obviously if you're using um, cotton as well so I'm just being very gentle because obviously the iron has obviously warmed the vinyl up which does sort of soften it and make it easier to damage so I am just sort of being being gentle with it so that I don't that I don't damage it so at this stage if you were using um you know cotton to to do this part you could you could press to get you know a really crisp crisp finish here but with using vinyl that's not really that's not really possible so I'm just going to manipulate round and use my fingers to sort of thingy these these edges out so <clears throat> then all I'm going to do is top stitch down each side and what that then does is that encases those raw edges inside and gives it a nice neat finish so I'm just going to lift my foot up as high as it can go. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get right to the very top because of the bulk. So I'm going to I'm going to get as high up as I can, and I'm going to make sure I keep a hold of my threads at the back. Move to my top stitching length. And 
then just get as close as I can to that top and I'll back stitch at the start and at the back. And then just do exactly the same on the other side. That is our double zipper pocket finished. I'm just going to fold that in half to um, keep it sort of the way that I want it so that when I install it, it's it's ready just to go. So I'm going to move on to the flap and the body of the wallet. So just pop your right sides together. One of the things that I actually prefer to do before I actually put on and sew my pattern pieces together is I actually like to cut the the slots for my um, magnetic snaps so there is a marking on the pattern pieces for where you'd mark for where you put your magnetic snaps so I've actually already placed mine there and made my two markings so I'm just going to use my seam ripper and just cut those two before I sew it together it just I find it easier to do that and then it means once it's sewn I can then just install my snap and top stitch and it's done so eighth of an inch seam allowance Because this is a curved seam, I use my um, pinking shears just to cut round, obviously making sure that I don't cut into my stitching and it just helps me get a crisper seam there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find warm in this up to turn through helps and I'm going to turn it through and press it with the pressing cloth from the waterproof canvas side um, and then I'll come back and we'll install the magnetic snap and top stitch. So that's all been turned through and pressed. This is one of the things that I like to use kind of help push out those seams and those corners just to make sure that they're all nice and crisp. So I'm going to install the female part of my magnetic snap before I top stitch. This is personal preference. Some people prefer to top stitch before the install other people prefer my method I top stitch bef after I've installed 
so I always use a little tiny bit of fabric glue literally in the center between where I've made those little incisions for my prongs I just find that it helps when the, when the magnetic snaps being used it helps to sort of stop any sort of like pulling and, and fraying of the fabric behind now because I've already got Decaville light in behind those prongs I don't need to put anything else behind it if I didn't have Decaville light on my line and fabric I would have put a little piece um but on on top and then push my prongs behind and I've just popped the backing on and pushed my prongs out over and then I'm just going to use a little bit of um, duct tape behind to protect this fabric here And then I'm going to top stitch all the way around. And one of the reasons that I install my hardware before I to top stitch around is because then I close off at the top. My um, my front panel has gone a little bit wonky for some reason, but that doesn't matter because it will be within my seam allowances um, when I attach it to the body of the wallet. So it's absolutely fine. It's nothing to worry about. So I'm just going to top stitch around an eighth of an inch. that stitching's okay because it has been a little bit temperamental today. I haven't actually sewn for um, it's about four weeks um, with holidays and being a little bit poorly and then getting back to work um, and catching up with things so I feel a little bit out of practice today and um, yeah like I say Jill has been a little bit temperamental with me this evening so yeah we might be falling out <laughs> so so now we'll move on to the body of the wallet so we've got our markings so in the pattern you have your markings for where the male part of your magnetic snap will be and then I have my markings here for where I want my nameplate to go this is just where i personally put my nameplate obviously you can put your nameplate wherever you could put it on your flap um you could put it further down within um the wallet it's again totally and utterly personal preference so again i do like to install my hardware if i can like at this sort of stage of construction because i just find it easier than trying to do it once it's been assembled so I'm just putting a little bit of glue the same way as I did for the other part and you just want to make sure that those those slits that you're making for these prongs to go through are literally just the right size for for the like the prongs like you don't want them to be too too long because obviously you, you know they'll show and obviously you don't want them to be too small either because obviously if you're forcing those prongs to go through that will cause tension and that could cause damage you know as you use as you use your wallet so you'll get you'll get used to how how big you need to make them but 
um, you know, play around with it, but make make sure that it's, you know, the right the right size. If you haven't, to sort of force them through. Um, I can't find these ones. Then you know, go back and just make them that little bit bigger. So as I say, even though I'm putting onto vinyl, I still do put a little bit of glue on because I just find. It gives a look extra like longevity. And then just cover the back with a little bit of tape. You don't have to necessarily use this tape you could use um you know a little bit of like double-sided tape just don't take the back off um anything just you could use a bit of masking tape anything just to sort of protect the the fabric that's going to be under this from from these prongs so i just make sure that they're, they're sitting right especially this one because it's a, a rectangle just making sure it's nice and nice and square so obviously i've got my center of this one marked and then i have the center of my flap marked so i put right sides together and this is where you know you, you have your your flap would come up obviously if you're putting I made this mistake when I very first made my first bag because I just automatically wanted to see the two sides facing each other and then obviously when you open it, it's not right. So you want right sides together so that obviously when the bag opens, it's all, all the same out of fabric. So if you are wanting to install... Um, a wristlet um so if you were wanting to install um d rings and such like what i would do is at this stage i would attach it to this side of the flap so that i didn't forget to do it because what you'd want to do is sandwich um you know the connector so like a little so if you were making um you know, a little D-ring connector um, to attach a wristlet strap um, and, and you would want to sandwich it between the lining. So you would want to put it against the lining of the flap. So I would literally attach it here or at this side, depending on which side you wanted it, so that it was done and that you didn't forget to attach it. So that would that would be done at, at this stage so put those two is it where well, you've marked your center of your flap and marked your center of your line and piece and just clip them together and then what i do is i pull that up and I just check that it's it lines up properly. So as I fold that up, that these bits here, oh sorry, I'm way out of camera, sorry. Um, I, as I fold that up, that these bits here are even, so that once the bar, once the wallet is all made, it's going to be even and not skew with so if you think that it's going to be uneven you can unclip it and sort of straighten it up and just sort of until you're happy with it and attach it that way but obviously you know if you sort of attach the flap sort of really over here so it's really off center by the time you clip 
the magnetic snaps together can you see how sort of uneven this is so then you, your wallet is going to be very very uneven once that's completely made so um, I mean another way that you can do it is by you know basically attaching it together pulling it round clipping your centers together and then sort of evening evening it up so that these parts are nice and even and it means that when you put your wallet all together all your sides and everything like that will all be nice and straight so I base this part together now And then we need to attach our lining piece. So I uh, find my center and then find my center again. And then I cut in the middle about three inches. So I have a slot and this is gonna be my turn and slot. And you might think, oh my God, that's right in the middle of the wallet, but it will become apparent once it's all put together, how it is that you don't see that. So that fold that I've just made, I'm gonna line up with that center mark, and I'm gonna line up those centers. And then I'm basically just gonna go around and clip it all together. So move that out of the way. So use lots and lots and lots and lots of clips. Especially if the fabric you're using, if it does have a tiny little bit of stretch, the more clips the better. And because, although I've interfaced this vinyl, it has had a little bit of stretch to it, I'm going to use plenty clips because I don't want it moving. So. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go right the way around this and so I'll see. And I'm going to start where my um, flap is basted in. So like I say, if you'd wanted, if you want to add a wristlet um, to it, this is, your, your connector would need to be between your two lining pieces, which is why it's always a good idea when you're basting your flap to your body is to do it at that point so that when you're then putting your two lining pieces together, if you forget to do it, um, it's already it's already on there. So, you know, if you'd want to put it at either side, if you're wanting to make it into a crossbody bag so that you can attach a complete strap, you would put a little connector at either side. So I'm going to start just at the other side of where that flap is and two and a half inch sorry two and a half stitch length and a quarter of an inch seam allowance And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to run 
another line of stitching just just actually just in front of this row because it's vinyl um and i don't want it to pull apart and especially because of the thickness where this flap is i just want to give it extra strength And then I'm just going to go around where the curve edges are with the pink and shears just to take off the excess. Obviously making sure that I don't cut into either one of those, um, those seams. But I'm not going to take anything off the top or off the bottom either. So I'm going to do the same as what I did with the flat. So I'm going to do, go and just use a pressing cloth um, over this side, um, warm it up so that I can turn it through because it does make it easier. And I'm going to use this part here to turn turn it through. Um, I'll use. My, my little tool to help push those seams out and then I'm going to again use the pressing cloth on the waterproof canvas side um, to, to give it a press and make sure it's all nice and, and flattened out so that we can top stitch and I'll come back um, when I'm at the top stitch and that um, bit. So that's now been turned through and given a little bit of a press Obviously, it's difficult to press um, vinyl and waterproof canvas. Um, but obviously, I've just used my fingers and just walled out those seams and obviously just used the little tool just to try and make sure that those seams are all pushed out as properly as I can. Um, obviously, not pushing too hard that I'd damage those seams. So now just need to go around and top stitch round this outer edge and what I would tend to do as well is again to take my time doing it and just if I need to just use my fingers to roll these seams as I go one thing I do try to do is I do try to make sure that that seam is in the middle as much as I can so instead of it being rolled towards the outside or rolled towards the inside I try to make sure that it's as in the center as I possibly can get it um, I think that helps to make a more sort of professional looking bag I also on the necessary clutch wa wallet always start my top stitching just on the edge of the flap um because so, basically where it would cross over is going to be where it's folded round so you're not going to sit, see where that start and stop of the um top stitching is so i always start there and you can use this opening here just to pull down that line and to make sure that it hasn't ridden up towards the flap. And obviously if you are stopping just to sort of adjust 
the edge and make sure it's nice and flat. Make sure that you're leaving your needle down. One of the things you can do obviously when you come back to meet um, where you started your top stitching if you don't want to overlap is you can obviously pull your stitching through to the unders underside and and tie off So that's the outside of your bag done. So we just need to put the inside of the bag together. So I'm gonna start with the card slots, which I tend to just eyeball this, but obviously, you know that this cut here is in the centre. So if you fold up the bottom to meet that top seam, and you'll see that that um, cut is in the centre. And then your card slots, obviously this seam is also the centre. Again, I just like to use a little bit of fabric glue just to help keep everything nice and in place. And I centre those together. Now I kind of eyeball these edges and then kind of fold them over and just look to make sure that that's the kind of about the same overlapping you know one side's not bigger than bigger than the other so I'm kind of happy with that so I'm now going to fold these edges over and clip And then do the same on the other side. You want to make sure that you're pulling this quite tight because what you want to do is you want to make sure that this these card slot card slots are caught in this seam. What you don't want to be doing is sewing this seam and the card slots not being caught um, so that when you're folding your wallet up, the card slots um, are sort of, you know, shooting out and, you know, it won't, it won't sit right. So I'm, so 
I saw this at around about the quarter inch and at the 4.5 stitch length and then just back stitch a few stitches and just take it nice and slow and say just making sure that it's nice and taut obviously not not sort of stretch that you're stretching it out of out of shape and then again just go back a few stitches And then just do the same on the other side one of the reasons that you really want to go nice and slow when you're doing this particularly on a domestic machine is when you're using vinyl like this and, and on the domestic um, those feed dogs really really want to chew up this vinyl like it has a little bit on this corner here which isn't going on the on these um the zipper pockets it's not going to be a big deal because you're actually not going to see it um but the faster you try and take it through the it, it it'll it'll really chew up on those feed dogs so just by going slowly by not sort of trying to take it through too quickly that's less likely to happen so and especially as I say when you're using thicker fabrics that's much more likely to happen let see I'm just going back a few a few stitches So that's those card slots put in and what I do is then open that up to make sure that those are both caught in. It is sometimes handy to have, oh I have got one, a, a card just to make sure that your cards fit nicely which they all do I actually find with these measurements and seam allowances and everything I've given you I actually can fit two cards in each of these card slots like really like really nicely so the next thing that I'm going to do is insert the zipper pockets now again, I do this slightly differently and I can't remember exactly where I've seen how I do this and I don't know actually if it's a combination of a few different videos that I've seen over the years of how I do it but this is kind of my, um, my method. So... I put zipper tape in the middle and then where you can kind of see where that middle seam is I line it up with the seam of the card slots and take it right up to the to the edge so it's nice and flat and I'm just making sure that it's, you know, nice and even. And that double-sided tape is keeping it in place. So you can already see that 
thought that line you know where I made the cut to, to turn it through is is disappearing so now to close this up there's two different ways of doing it we can either sew a box from this side or we can sew a box from from this side and I'm actually going to do it from the other from from this side the reason I'm going to do it from this side is two reasons one because I'm using the domestic and sometimes the feed dog likes to chew up vinyl so worst case scenario it chews it up it'll be on the inside and I can give this to somebody who wouldn't kind of mind so much um, and I actually prefer the finish of it done of it done this way as well so I'm just sort of making sure that it's that it's nicely lined up so when you do it this way if if you've done the NCW where you've actually made the outside um, out of two pieces because you've got directional fabric which is all explained in the pattern which basically you cut two halves with extra for a side seam and you join it together so that you've got an entire piece so that when it's folded together your fabric is facing the right way you would actually have a, a seam in the middle and you can just measure up from that but because we've done one single piece um i'm going to need to measure so all i'm going to do is i'm going to measure from the top to the bottom and i'm going to measure halfway and then i'm just going to go half an inch either side of that and mark a line because I want a one inch marking so you can do where it's a box but I'm literally going to do Two, la two lines so I'm going to start by coming underneath pushing my foot up as high as I can and making sure that this flap is pulled out of the way as much as I possibly can so I'm not going to start exactly where this line of stitching is I'm going to start just ever so slightly in and I'm going to go in. You may find that you need to change your needle to an 18 because it is quite thick, especially using vinyl. But we'll see how we get on. And again, I'm just going to go really slowly because there isn't any rush. I'm going to be really careful when removing it so that again those feed dogs don't catch the, the vinyl on that side and then I'm just going to do exactly the same for the other line so I'm just going to line it up pulling this bit out so that I'm not catching it
Oh, and it hasn't eaten it up. Great. Woohoo! So because we've pulled this out of the way, it hasn't caught this in with, you know, because we haven't gone too far, it hasn't caught this in. So that has then put our zipper pockets in. It's enclosed the opening. So all we need to do now is fix our zipper pockets in. So again, there's markings in the pattern as to the best way to do that. But I have found a little bit of a cheap method and I literally do it by measuring from this corner three and a half inches out and then from this corner three and a half inches and I think this is just sort of personal preference for me for where I like um, my I seem to have lost my clips. Oh, there they are. Staring right at me. Um, yeah, this is just personal preference for me for where, you know, I like the folds of the purse to be. So when I measure three and a half and three and a half from the edges, that is just where I like sort of the spacing of my purse to be. Play around with it, you know, you might like this section to be bigger. So if you did two and a half and two and a half, this would be bigger if you did three. You know, it's it's pers it is personal preference, you know. Of you know, follow. There's there's a save guides within the pattern. Follow that. It's it's you know it it is all um, laid out for you, but I just do it that way because it's easier for me. It means I don't have to get my pattern back out again as I'm working. Um, so yeah. So then, that's like that, and then the purse shuts and then can you see how pretty much that lines up sorry my battery ran out so like I was saying you'll work out where you want to to put your zipper pockets for for the spacing of your purse so literally all that's left to do now is to put our rivets in so at this point um, especially if you were doing a cotton um, purse you can actually stitch down these parts here and to do that you would literally manipulate everything out of the way and stitch down this part here but we're going to use rivets so I'm going to show you how I do that so I like to place my rivets sort of literally underneath this part here so use my leather punch which just a generic leather punch you can literally get them all over the place and I just punch my hole through try to make sure that I'm going through at a 90 degree angle And I just go around and I do all four punches first.
I use eight mil rivets. Now I've got two rivets out. I think I'm gonna use eight by eight, but I have got my eight by 10 out just because I'm not 100% sure whether the eight by eight are gonna be long enough. No, oh, they're absolutely fine. You basically want, I don't know whether you can actually see that, but you want the rivet to just come through the other side of the material. Now, if that wasn't coming through, I would need to use the eight by 10, but that's coming through absolutely fine. So then I just pop the one on the, the other side. And you can get lots of different rivet um, tools. You know, you can get sets that have different colours with um, a rivet setting tool, you know, on the likes of eBay and Amazon for not very much money, which are great tools to, to get started with. So, again, I always do all of my punching and then putting my rivets in all at once because basically I find if I do it separately if I put one in and then go to do my rivet I, I'll basically knock my, my rivets that are open I'll knock them over and then I'll spend two hours picking rivets up off the floor so I'm quite accident prone so I can take these clips off now because these are all clipped in so just basically use my rivet press to pop these in. I'll see if I can get a little bit closer in for you. Sorry. Never win any awards as a cameraman, will I? Right. So it is really easy to use. It's just... set it into the bottom and then push it down and you'll feel it um, sort of set in place. You don't want to press it too much because you'll damage the rivet and you'll get sort of like a funny marking on the back. Um, obviously you don't want to not press it enough because it won't um, like obviously hold the purse properly but you'll be able to feel if it's not if it's not set so it'll be a bit squished after you've done that but you'll just be able to manipulate it back into place So there we go. Just come back out again. Oh, like I say, no prizes for any camera work there. So yeah, there's the finished purse there. So that's a double zip with the card slots and front and back. Um, you know, money receipt slots, all made with waterproof canvas and vinyl. It's really very structured. It's not flimsy. It's not um, floppy or anything like that. It's it's really quite quite a solid purse. That's one of the reasons why I love to use waterproof canvas. Yeah. So that's the purse 
finished double zippers with the card slots and um, note and receipt slots. It's quite structured with using the waterproof canvas and vinyl. Um, like you say, it's not a, a floppy or flimsy purse, it is really quite structured. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial today on the mini NCW. Um, sorry for the few technical glitch, gl glitches <laughs> um, with Jill deciding to have a little bit of a wobbler, um, batteries going, memory cards filling, um, me not having sewn for four weeks and feeling a little bit rusty. But, you know, I did say that I wanted my channel to be real and obviously that's that's what it is uh, so the purse I've sewn today is exactly how I would make an NCW if I was sewing it for a customer um, using waterproof canvas as a line and even if I use um, a woven as an exterior I would always use a, a waterproof canvas for an interior because I think it's really hard wearing and it does give a lot of structure and a lot of durability so that's how I would make my card slots um the zipper pockets and everything like that um so i hope it has been helpful if anybody's got any questions feel free to drop them in the comment box down below and um, anything i've used or i've referenced i will try and remember where i've getting things from um and drop them in the comments below if i don't and you want to know again feel free um you know message me on my facebook page or through my website um, i do try to get back to people within a reasonable length of time and um, i look forward to seeing you all again soon with my next tutorial next week so take care and see you soon bye thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to see my next video when it's released i'll see you next time